These are the men and women of Beaver Valley, the bravest of the brave. They fought fearlessly for their country, their city, their community, and for the ideals we share as Americans. They served proudly in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Gulf War, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Here, now, are their stories, their own experiences in their own words, the words of the heroes of Beaver Valley. When World War II began, she was a teenager living in Hoylake, England. Now 92 years old, Swickley resident Betty English remembers the challenges of living during that era. The German planes and the, the American, and there was, they had a different sound when they would come over. And then Liverpool was bombed, you know, very much. They used to send down um, lights, they looked like chandeliers. And if they would hit the roofs, then they would go on fire. And we all had gas masks then because we thought the Germans would do what they did in the First World War. We had a big old house. You didn't have to, but you could tell the town hall that you would take people in. Um, we had a family that was bombed out. We had a Czech refugee, and the Salvation Army was the one who smuggled him out of Czechoslovakia. And we had a Australian girl with her little boy. She was married to a Dutch naval officer, and there were no ships that would take you back to Australia. So she lived with us. I don't know how my mother did it. She did all the cooking and took care of the ration books and coupons and things like that, you know. It was, wow. <laughs> As the war progressed, Betty's family became enveloped in the war. Her father worked on the Ark Royal, an aircraft carrier, and her brother joined the British Eighth Army. My brother, when our war broke out, he was 17, and he was in what you would call the National Guard over there, it was the Territorials, so didn't see him for a few years. I worked for the British and Foreign Marine Insurance Company, and we insured cargoes of ships. When I was 18, I had to go into the, the service, and they sort of picked what you did before. And so they put me in the Army Pay Corps. So I was in, sent to a place called Shrewsbury. It was a medieval place on the border of England and Wales. There were piles and piles of squadrons of airports and so forth around us. And some of the guys would, they'd make an excuse when they were off, they wanted to come in and see their accounts. Well, half of them didn't have accounts there with those moves, but it was just to see them, the girls in the ATS. Betty's future husband, Robert English, served in the United States Army and was among the first Americans to arrive in England. The two would meet while waiting in line for a movie in Liverpool. England was full of Poles and every, I mean, every kind of army or whatever. And these two Yanks were behind us. So they sat with us in the movie. Betty continued to see Bob as both of their lives and the war progressed. Even though the war placed many restrictions on them, Betty found ways to make things work. As the war went on, we were only allowed to travel 25 miles. What I would do, I would go to the station the night before and I'd get my ticket to where I wanted to go. And I would put my civvies underneath my uniform and after we'd been gone a few miles, I'd go to the bathroom and I'd come back as a civilian. So <laughs> I was never caught. So <laughs> it's the only way I could do it, you know. In April 1944, Betty and Bob were both given leave and got married. Afterwards, they didn't see each other for a year. 
Despite the time apart, they would remain married for 59 and a half years until Bob passed away in 2003. And I came over on the Queen Mary with 5,000 other war brides. There was about six of us to a room. But we had bunk beds like we had in the army in a way, except these were more comfortable. They moved to Sewickley in 1946 and would eventually have four children. Having adjusted to American life, Betty decided to become a United States citizen. Well, I won't, I won't tell you who the president was, but I couldn't stand it that I couldn't vote. When it comes to her experiences in war and her personal life, Betty looks at it all with astonishment. Yeah, those were the, the days, right? It's hard to, to believe, yeah. I've been very blessed, I really have.